Otto Stabansky and the Reverend Gomont are of long acquaintance of some 20 years or more. Initially hired as a carpenter upon the Reverend's return from his infamous travels, first-generation immigrant Stabansky and his wife Mina were retained as servants, with Mina working as a housekeeper and cook for the old man, while Otto was employed as a fixer for the Reverend, a doer of evil deeds. For many years, this troubled man has sought deliverance from the dark whims of the Reverend Gaumont, who uses Stabansky's weakness for whiskey to hold him in place, forever in the Reverend's sinister command. Otto Stabansky has done many things for Gaumont, but as he makes his way home to Mina, south on Delaney Road, in the August of 1914, his heart is heavy with the Reverend's latest request, the next salvo in the old villain's vendetta against the Pembrokes. Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south. The streetcar runs between. And all we can do is try to keep up. Otto, my husband, very nearly your supper is ready. Please sit down, and in just a moment your hunger will be over. Alas, dear Mina, my enchanting wife, I have no appetite. I fear that I may never have an appetite again. Morning, noon, or especially by night. What on earth brings this? You have worked hard for all the day, and now you near to refuse my cooking? What bothers you in this way? Nothing bothers me. I'm just plainly not hungry. Blame the heat, not me. Do you expect me to be bothered? It's good enough for the reverend, that which I cook. Then carry it up the road and feed it to him. Uh. Mina, I apologize for this, for my harsh words to that who I love most. It is not you that vexes me. Your cooking sustains us. It is not to blame for the miserable state in which I am trapped. Then all is not well. No, Mina. All is not well. Your mention of the Reverend served to remind me of his reach, even into my own home. What has he done? It's what he's asked me to do. What is it this time, Otto? Something... Much too awful to share with you, dear wife. Something not fit for you to hear or to know about me. I work all day in the home of the Reverend and see and hear much more than anyone knows. I need not be protected or shielded. What has he asked for you to do? Something so wicked. Something that I cannot do, no matter what's come before between the Reverend and I. No matter what he's asked from me before, something I may find myself unable to do for this man. But are we not his servants? Mina, you do not see. The Reverend Gaumont has bid me murder Henry Pembroke. Then there it is. The Reverend Gaumont's latest order for Otto Stabansky. The ordered assassination of Henry Pembroke the nearest and current nemesis of Reverend Gaumont. Decades of running shadowy errands for the Reverend haven't entirely removed Zabansky's humanity. This most recent call to treachery, having led Gaumont's assassin into lamentation and perhaps for the first time, a sense of the enormity of the old Reverend's evil towards his neighbours and anyone else who stands in the way of his ultimate plans for Delaney Road and the community known as Halfway There. Murder? Henry Pembroke? Wife? 
I confess I am sick at heart and soul, for I have done such fiendish things in the reverend's employ before this, all throughout our time here. I don't believe it, Otto. I can't. Believe this. I know what became of the Bats family. The Bats family? But no one knows what happened to them. It is a mystery on this world. Your husband knows what became of them. I've killed before. Remember that we came here with nothing and he has bound us here. Bound me by what I've done and what I know and bottle by bottle of the Reverend's whiskey. I belong to him as a soldier to his general. Oh no, Otto, pray. Pray don't do this terrible thing. The Pembrokes are fine people. Mrs. Pembroke waves to me on the road. She just returned last week with Miss Sophie. And I have had pleasing dealings with Mr. Pembroke myself. He has done no worldly wrong to me but the Reverend. He has commanded. It is to be made, Mina, to look like a burglary. You must resist, Otto. You must, upon your very soul, for my sake, for Mrs. Pembroke and their beautiful daughters, defy the old reverend and save yourself. Otto, cease your labors for the moment. I have a chore for you. Yes, Reverend. <laughs> it's those danged Pembrokes. You see, Otto, they have become a problem that will not go away. Oh, not that I haven't tried. Spooking the Pembrokes off the South Tract has failed, and as you know, I've relinquished my lawsuits, and with my summer ending, those parasites seem set to stay. My whisper campaign against old man Pembroke did little. Not that the scolds of this stretch of road didn't aid me greatly in transmitting my fictions about Pembroke and that cashier of his. Like cockroaches, my man. As we can't drive them away or use the finer points of the law, so the time has come for more reliable measures. Henry Pembroke? You don't mean for me to... Indeed I do, Otto. He'll have to be removed. And I'm not partial against removing that wife of his, too, just to ensure that by spring there isn't a Pembroke remaining on my south tract and to make those Pembroke girls weep and weep. Boo-hoo. Two major thorns shall be removed from mine side, and my farm can be rightfully united and whole once again. That oldest daughter of theirs, that Diana, I have something magnificent cooking for her. A special sort of misery of the slow variety, of the matrimonial kind. A certain young man newly arrived to Harborview. But Diana Pembroke is married of late. Her husband... Only temporarily, Otto. A situation soon rectified, my good man, but in due time. I'll see after Diana Pembroke, or as she is currently known, Diana Putnam, in my own fashion for now. At this time, your priority is the burglary murder of Pembroke and his wife, if she's available in the bargain. The both of them. <laughs> Mina, there is no choice. We could run, could we not? And he would find us, Mina. I know too much for Gaman to allow me any escape. And the same holds for you. He would find us, track us, wherever we went, and one morning we'd both likely wake up with slit throats. No. I see that I have no choice. No way out. I must kill Henry Pembroke. Otto Stabansky, despite his misgivings, 
finds himself unable to defy the Reverend for fear of grievous harm coming to his wife Mina. More than anyone in Halfway There or Greater Harbour View, Sabansky is aware of the lengths that the old Reverend Gomont would go to in order to feed and grow his obsessions. At the moment, Gomont is obsessed with the Pembroke Lilac Sanctuary. Formerly the Reverend South Tract, the same land that he stole from the ill-fated Bats family over a decade before. Will Stabansky carry out the Reverend's nefarious order and dispose of Henry and Jane Pembroke? Find out next time on Annex. Annex.